Welcome to Tech News Briefing. It's Monday, November 27th. I'm Julie Chang for The Wall Street Journal. In the very southeastern tip of Texas lies the Rio Grande Valley. And in the valley, there's a place called Cameron County, where SpaceX's Starbase has set up shop. The company's been there for about a decade. Starbase is located in a relatively isolated area in the eastern part of the county, and not many people live there, making it an optimal location for rocket launches. But the locals there are grappling with their remote corner of Texas being made into a doorstep to space. Our space reporter, Micah Maidenberg, spent some time there, and he's with me now. Micah, what was the area like before SpaceX moved in? The Rio Grande Valley a network of interconnected towns in the very southeastern tip of Texas. It's a significant drive to San Antonio, to Houston, and it's right on the border with Mexico. There's a lot of historic movement back and forth over the border. The region has historically had a lot of agriculture. It's had port work, metalworking, trade, logistics as like an economic base. But it's also a, a region that has long struggled with poverty. And the biggest town in the valley is Brownsville. It has about 187,000 residents or so. SpaceX's facility, Starbase, is a little bit more than 20 miles east of downtown Brownsville. How would you describe the relationship between SpaceX and the local government there? In some ways, SpaceX's main kind of interface with local government is with Cameron County. That's the county where the facility is located, where Starbase is set up. And it's a good relationship. County commissioners, elected officials in Cameron County are very supportive of SpaceX and have worked out an arrangement where the state highway that takes you from Brownsville, from the west to the east to get out to Starbase, will get shut down so the company can conduct launches, as the company did recently. And closing that road means closing access to the beach that locals have long used. But county officials told me that they very much see that as a a trade-off worth making because of the the jobs, the the economic development, the, the technology that SpaceX is like bringing into the area. Are there other ways that you saw SpaceX transforming Brownsville or the surrounding areas? Yeah, in some ways, it's really subtle. Like in downtown Brownsville, for example, there's a mural that has Elon Musk's face on it and the tagline, Boca Chica to Mars. Boca Chica Beach is the beach that I was just mentioning. It's very close to where the SpaceX launch pad is at. The Musk Foundation has paid for other improvements and changes in Brownsville, like in the downtown area. You might be driving through a subdivision in Brownsville and see a SpaceX flag hanging from a home or be in a restaurant or bar and see uh, a person with a, a SpaceX employee badge like dangling from their belt. The company has said that they directly employ 1,800 or so staff at Starbase. That doesn't include contractors. And the impact of that investment, the wages, flows back out in the surrounding communities. And for supporters, the hope is that's just the start and there's more to come. Speaking of supporters, you got to chat with various residents there. What did the people you spoke with say about SpaceX's presence? Boosters for SpaceX are thrilled that Cameron County is now on the map. It's part of the discussion of the global space race. For example, I spoke with Eddie Trevino. He is the county judge of Cameron County, which is the top elected official for county government. Here's what he had to say when we were talking about the project. There are certain things that happen in in a community that are considered generational or transformational. And uh, this is definitely one of them. But on the flip side, you hear people raising concerns about the environmental impact of SpaceX's operation. And something that comes up quite often is access to the beach. We were talking about that earlier. Boca Chica Beach is a very unique place. It's undeveloped. It's not like the beaches along other parts of the Gulf Coast that have hotels, a lot of restaurants, a big tourist trade, and folks worry about what it means to have the world's biggest rocket and this big launch pad right next to it. One person I talked to is named Michelle Serrano. She's very skeptical, to say the least, about SpaceX and would like to see the company 
eventually go from the region. Cape Canaveral wants it. Once they figure out the stupid rock within a year, get it out of here. Make your manufacturing somewhere else. We don't want it. We want the beach. And the beach gives us much more entertainment and energy and healing than anything a rocket will ever do. And what about businesses? Are any locals trying to capitalize on SpaceX being there? Yeah, one good example is called Hopper House. This is a restaurant and bar. It's located in Port Isabel, which is a few miles north across the bay from Starbase, from SpaceX. And the owner there, Ernie Zavaleta, has been building out this business and trying to figure out how to, how to bring in a space-centric clientele, if you will. You walk in there and a few of the taps for the, the beer, for example, have a Starship spacecraft on top of them. And Ernie, a lot of his business is driven by tourist trade, people coming down to South Texas to escape the winter and colder climates. Ernie told me that if he can get a swell of patrons that are in the region for SpaceX launches, that's like the cherry on top for the business. And he's trying to find ways to bring them in. We hope and hear that it's going to be a lot of launches. They've got a lot of vehicles, right? Ship, starships ready to go, boosters ready to go. If it's a huge influx of business a week at a time, that's great. If we do six launches a year and it's a nice six-week pop, that, that's great. So, Micah, you were there for several days. Ultimately, what did you come away with? Companies change, they disrupt, they alter, they transform cities and towns all the time. SpaceX is one part of this bigger regional economy in the Rio Grande Valley. And what everybody there is trying to figure out is, where does this go from here? The last few years, there's been a tremendous amount of growth and change in the landscape in ways that you can see and feel. And some people see this as the start of this huge future where this corner of Texas becomes a starport, like the spaceport to, <laughs> to missions to Mars and operations in space that have never been done before. Others see this as something that's changed their way of life and changed the landscape in a way that doesn't serve them and want it gone. How that plays out is the real question going forward. That was our space reporter, Micah Maidenberg. We reached out to SpaceX for comment, but they did not respond to those requests. And that's it for Tech News Briefing. Today's show was produced by Anthony Bansi with supervising producer Melanie Roy. I'm Julie Chang for The Wall Street Journal. We'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for listening.